Oklahoma ranks fifth in the nation in cattle and calf production. In fact, we have more cows, 4.3 million, than we do people in Oklahoma. The problem right now, though, is getting them processed and on to market. Reporter Steve Shaw joins us to explain why and how cattle ranchers are taking matters into their own hands. Steve. Rich, according to Oklahoma State, there are just over 46,000 beef cow operations in the Sooner State. The pandemic has been a catalyst and a shift for some cattle producers that is taking place right now. This 7,500 acre cattle ranch in Sweetwater, 25 miles west of Elk City, has been in Monty Tucker's family since just before the first pandemic, 1917. But what I did see in this pandemic was people all of a sudden uh, wanted to be more familiar where their food come from. Um, we kind of saw some shelves empty out, and I hate to use the word panic, but there was probably a little bit of panic set in. Uh, people decided that uh, a freezer full of beef in their garage is better than hoping that it's something's on the shelf. It's town. You could say Tucker was ahead of the curve when it comes to processing his 750 head of cattle each year. 20 years ago, the Tucker family started a farm to plate concept. The idea was not new to Oklahoma. The Tuckers sell beef directly to consumers as long as a licensed and state inspected processor cuts the meat. Before the pandemic, Tucker relied on processors from Burns Flat, Weatherford, and Canute. The beef animal itself for me will run you about $1,000 to $1,200. Is it cut up? No. Then you pay the custom processor. And that usually, uh, rates right here locally now are running 85 cents a pound, rail weight, vac packed and put in your freezer. And for a half a beef, just consider that to be about another 300 and 300 to 400 bucks. So for less than 1500 1500 bucks, that will yield about 250 to 285 pounds of vac packed, ready to eat beef in your freezer. What kind of uh, A half a beef, you're going to get about 12 ribeyes. You're going to get about 10 to 15 T bones or strips and fillets. The T-bone is a strip and a fillet together with the T-bone in it. Uh, you're going to enjoy some sirloins out of that. Um, hundred and some pounds of hamburger meat. When the pandemic hit in early 2020, Oklahoma used $10 million in CARES Act money to fund grants for meat processors to build facilities or to expand what they already had. The state of Oklahoma had 195 applicants for that cash. Route 66 meat in nearby Sayre was one of those applicants who were successful. Thanks in part to a $200,000 CARES Act grant, they opened their doors six months ago. Owner Brian Jackson is an Army veteran who graduated from West Point. He spent six years serving in dangerous places all over the world and was awarded the Purple Heart and Distinguished Service Cross after being seriously injured in Iraq 15 years ago. Jackson had met his future wife, Bailey, whose family has also been ranchers for decades when he was stationed at Fort Sill. He says supply chain issues caused delays getting started, but he says the State Department of Agriculture and the town of Sayre has been there every step of the way. He processes beef for producers, including Monty Tucker, then gives it back for Tucker to sell. Route 66 Meat boasts nine full-time employees who process 15 to 20 cows a week. Jackson says when they get to full capacity, he'll have and they'll process 40 or 50 a week. Is there money in this? There is. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of labor involved. And he says getting good help can be a challenge. And so we've had several people that had no experience at all in the beginning, and now they're, they're moving at such efficiency to where every week we're getting faster and faster, or we're still pushing for that quality. Back at Monty Tucker's ranch. We really enjoy comments back to us about how good our steaks are. 
But one thing that continues to blow me away is people talk about how good our hamburger is. He says the pandemic had drastic effects on his farm to plate operation. It takes seven pounds of corn to produce a pound of beef. Tucker says right now, corn feed costs double what it costs a year ago. I tell everybody that I used to have to sell the beef and when the pandemic hit, I just become an order taker. Uh, the phone rang. Uh, my normal lead time, if, if you called me and wanted a half a beef, would be about 30 to 45 days. I could have one in your freezer. Through the pandemic, I was running six to eight months out. Now, thanks at least in part to Route 66 meat opening, Tucker says that lead time is cut back to 45 to 60 days. He says if you buy beef directly from him, it costs five to six dollars a pound, average. He says beef you buy at grocery stores or big box stores costs seven to eight dollars a pound. When customers buy a whole or half a beef, it's an investment for them. There's, it's a lot up front. But what they're finally realizing, if they will budget for that, they're saving money and getting a good quality product. Of course, everyone thinks that they're producing the best quality that they can, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that buying direct from a farmer is going to guarantee you a better product. Dr. Courtney Burr holds three degrees from Oklahoma State and a Ph.D. from Purdue. She works in research at OSU. So when you buy your meat at a grocery store, it does have um, that labeling, right? It has choice, prime, select, etc. And so you can use that as an indicator of quality, whereas if you're buying direct from the producer, um, you know, past experience may tell you that producer has great cattle um, and they're grading really well, but it's not necessarily a guarantee. She says the state doesn't keep track of how many farm to plate operations there are in the state, and she cautions anyone who wants to do it. It's just not necessarily a one size fits all solution. Um, some producers that maybe don't have access to a small scale um, slaughtering facility uh, may struggle with selling direct to consumers. You do have to have a state level inspection to sell to consumers. Jackson believes he'll thrive since he's located basically halfway between Oklahoma City and Amarillo, Texas. And I think more people are going away from the big uh, chains and they're wanting to buy meat they can trust. They know where it's from, it's local. They know the story where it's raised, they know where it's processed. And I think that is a growing trend. It is interesting and we we're really trying to help um, producers and small scale facilities as best we can. Um, here at Oklahoma State, we recently received a grant um, specific to small scale meat processing. So we will be working with um, producers specifically um, in person and online to try and help them decide if this is a good option for their operation and talk about some of these pitfalls, talk about the food safety requirements, um, talk about how you can sell your meat at a farmer's market and those sorts of things um, and try and help them navigate this changing landscape. Dr. Burr says it's not necessarily true that farm to plate is less expensive than beef you buy from supermarkets or big box stores. She says it varies.